As an IT professional, whether just starting out or already a seasoned pro, you must be able to communicate with the end users you support effectively to be successful at your job. Hi, I'm Wes Bryant, educator here at IT Pro TV, and in this episode of How to Get Started in IT, I'll give you five tips to help you better communicate with your end users. So what are some things that you could do to improve your communication with end users? I have some tips for you to try. Number one, drop the jargon. If you talk to people that you support the way you do your coworkers, you'll be ever, for lo ever lost in a sea of translation. Tu devrais toujours réfléchir avant de parler. Be aware that most people don't inherently know the different aspects of IT support, so they may not be reaching out to you about something that isn't your job function, but you just might be the first person that they contact. For example, you might be a security pro, but you get an email asking, you know, somebody to issue a mouse out to a new employee. Well, that's probably the help desk's wheelhouse and not yours, but the end user wouldn't inherently know to email the help desk first. Use common basic terms. Be okay with them explaining to you things like maybe the doo-wop or the doo-a-mahickey. Doo-a-mahickey. Thingamabob. Just keep in mind and try to understand, you know, their hand gestures. And when they're communicating, ask them simpler questions. Like, for instance, do you need your equipment set up? Not, did your DHCP server fail? Let me go ahead and check your DNS settings. Number two, be patient and understanding. They're probably already really frustrated because they've lost valuable work time or maybe they're on a deadline. Understand that technology is an intimidating factor for a lot of people and there's no such thing as having tech common sense because, well, everyone has a different background and different exposure to technology. Try to understand not just the problem at hand, but how the end user or users use the software or the hardware in the first place so you can better suit their needs. If someone comes to you over and over and over again, you know that person with the same problem, don't take it personal like they're not listening to you or they don't care. As I've already mentioned, technology is very intimidating for a lot of people. And some have ongoing anxiety about working around technology. Be patient and offer them assistance while helping them learn and reduce their anxiety about problem solving technology issues. And number three on the list is, well, asking questions. Asking questions is the best way to help the end user explain to you what the problem is and can help you gather more information. Questions like, is the problem only happening to you or has anyone else complained about the same issue? Questions like, how are you using this piece of software? This can give you insight into how much or how little they know about that software and maybe customizations that they need help troubleshooting. Have a list of common troubleshooting processes and go through it with them. Try to phrase things like, did you turn it off and turn it on again in a way that doesn't insult their intelligence, but lets them know that you're there trying to cover all the bases and more importantly, to help them. You're welcome. If you've recently installed new software or maybe got new hardware, like that printer that everybody hates, <laughs> ask if it's working out for the users who need it in the few days or the weeks or two after you installed it. In the first few days, it will help you gain insight into any additional configurations you may need to do to tailor that software or piece of hardware to the team's needs. A few weeks will give you ample time to know that the most users who need it actually got the chance to try it and that it's working appropriately. Coming in at number four on our list, be clear and organized with communication. You can choose to only communicate with the end users that you support via email about the issues you have, and in many ways, this will help you keep a paper trail of the problem and sure, show proof that you've worked on the resolution. If someone drops by your desk with a problem, ask them nicely to email you so you can have documentation to look to when you're troubleshooting for them and they don't accidentally get forgive, <laughs> lost in the wash, if you will. Now, if you can, use videos or pictures to make it super easy for them to follow your instructions. And if you're rolling out new software or even a new feature to your end users, make sure you write clear and concise messages that include all of the essential info every user will need to understand how it will be adopted by the company and how it affects their everyday. I can encourage you to do both a written document and a video if possible to better address the users who learn by reading and those who, well, learn by seeing. Does your company offer end user training? If not, make the case to your manager about adding end user training to the onboarding process and this can help the employees get a good introduction to the company's technology and understand the support resources like you that they have at hand. Remember that each company and team should tailor end user training to meet their needs 
we have a good intro course on end user security here at IT Pro TV that you can check out, and the link is in the description below. And our last one, number five on the list, ask for feedback. Asking someone if their issue is resolved goes a long way in helping you effectively communicate with the users you support. Follow through and make sure that they aren't still struggling with the same technical problem. Now, I mentioned this before, but always make sure that you're asking for feedback after you have changed or added something new to make sure that it's working the way it's intended for the users, well, who need it on a daily basis. Have you thought about creating user groups, maybe pooling people together with the same issues so that you can streamline the communication? If you regularly support a team, create a dedicated communication channel with that team so that you can also streamline communication. If a lot of users in that group have the same issue, having a dedicated group will help you send out the resolution message just once and hit all the necessary users versus individual communications with each team member. Make sure that you always reply back to somebody giving you feedback, whether it's good or bad. And don't just send a generic thanks. Instead, be sincere and make them feel valued. Example, thank you for your input. The team is taking your feedback into consideration and I appreciate you taking the time to respond. Now here, not only did you thank them for their effort, but you put value into their input. Does your company ask for feedback on services regularly? If not, I encourage you to champion a program where the end user can provide feedback for the current technology used and an open discussion board for any additional technology or services maybe that they need. Make sure to ask them frequently, how can you better support them day to day? This will foster better communication and services that you offer for your team. So here are my five tips to help you better communicate with end users. Have any thoughts or additional tips to share with IT pros? Drop them in the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel to get the latest videos. I'm Wes Bryan with IT Pro TV, and thank you for watching How to Get Started in IT, and I'll see you next time.